Philip Hergovic picked up his 14th straight career victory as a professional, of course, on the Haney Diaz undercard against a guy called Emir Amatovic. <laughs> That's how I'm going to pronounce his name. Now, this guy was also unbeaten, if we look at Amatovic here. Based in Germany, but originally from Serbia, that's where he was born. Six foot, two inches tall. He was 10-0 going into the fight with seven KOs. He hadn't fought anyone of note, looking at his record here. So this was a huge step up. His last fight was against the guy that was 10-10. and 10. Huge step up for Amatovic. Now, in the first round, Amatovic landed a few decent shots. He was landing some right hands to Hergovic's body. In fact, looking at Hergovic's weight here, Hergovic looked a little heavy to me. Yeah, he's definitely been lighter earlier on in his career. He was actually in the 220s earlier on in his career, Hergovic. Looked quite heavy here, but again, similar weight to what he was in his last fight. I'm not sure if he's going to be better with the weight or without it. It's not like he's pumped himself up with loads of you know, weightlifting or whatever, but it, it, there's a bit of extra fat there and you don't want to drain a guy, okay? He's a heavyweight. There's no reason to bring him down ridiculously low in weight. But I don't know. Should he not be at least in the low 240s rather than in the mid 240s? Because he is a little more sluggish now that he's a bit heavier. So as I say, Amatovic was able to land some body shots, land a few... Headshots here and there, nothing too damaging. But again, he is a smaller guy with relatively quick hands. And Hergovic, you know, I don't want to say he looked clumsy in there, but he looked, he's always been upright, but he looked a little stationary at times, left his chin hanging out to dry a couple times. And against a Deontay Wilder, and this is something that, that his own guys actually mentioned, and Anthony Joshua, a Deontay Wilder, uh, even a uh, Tyson Fury, of course, Alexander Usek, he's going to pay for those kind of mistakes. But of course, Hergovic would argue that if he's fighting a better class of opponent, he's not going to be making them kind of mistakes. But I always say that you don't want to get into bad habits. So no matter whether you're fighting a journeyman or you're fighting the top heavyweight in the world, you want to be consistent in terms of what you're doing in the ring technically. You don't want to be getting into bad habits. So yeah, I didn't think it was a bad performance by Hergovic. He basically overpowered the guy. He did use some skill in there to set the guy up for the shots. He was banging to the body, you know, landed some headshots. None of the knockdowns were particularly devastating. They were clubbing punches. And Amatovic went down of his own accord rather than being blasted to the canvas. Uh, he was obviously hurt. You know, he was definitely buzzed, but it wasn't like he was getting laid out every time he got hit uh, or every time he got dropped, rather. So, yeah, I thought he was an okay performance by Hergovic. But as I've said several times when doing post-fight videos for Philip Hergovic, he does need that step up because exactly for the reasons I've just mentioned. When you fight lower level opposition, you can get complacent. You can get into bad habits. You can get, you know, used to that level of opposition whereby you're not raising your game. Steel shop and steel, as they say. And Hergovic himself seems to know this. So he wants right now to fight anybody in the world. That's what Hergovic is talking about. He says that he's ready for the AJs and the Furies and Wilders and whoever out there. I don't know whether he is, but he says he's ready for that. So at 29 years of age, they might as well put him in there with a guy like that because he has the experience in the amateurs. He has the WSB experience. So, you know, I would say Go ahead and take that gamble if you feel like your guy is good enough. And of course, he is co-promoted by Eddie Hearn and the Sauerlands, although it, the Sauerlands appear to have more control over his career and what he's doing than Eddie Hearn. Maybe that's not the case, but that's how it appears from the outside looking in. So yeah, got the guy out of there in three rounds. I thought he was a decent enough performance, but he did look a little sluggish and left his chin hanging out to dry a few times. Now, he mentioned in an interview after this fight, that they're looking to match him against the Chinese heavyweight. I think it's Zeli Zhang. I think that's the one they're talking about. I think that's a good fight for Hergovic. If they can do that as the IBF final eliminator, why not? You know, just had Michael Hunter pull out of the Hergovic fight. And by the way, I need to cover the Michael Hunter fight against, uh, God, what's the guy's name? I forget his name. <laughs> but I did watch the 
highlights of that fight. So I'll come on to that a little bit later on. But yeah, Philip Hergovic marches on. If he can get that Zhang fight for the IBF final eliminator, he can then push on to try and get a world title fight. The IBF are generally the strictest of the sanctioned bodies with regards to enforcing their mandatories. So Hergovic is probably on the right road with regards to trying to get a title fight sooner rather than later pursuing the IBF route. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Hergovic's performance, what you think about him as a fighter overall, where you'd like to see him go next, and what his chances are, in your view, against the top heavyweights out there. Let me know.